Spring was born out of a growing need for gluten-free foods in the country. Uh, as we grow in population, as we grow uh, in the celiac and the gluten-free needs population group, we need better brands to come and cater to this audience. Uh, currently, unfortunately, there aren't very many global quality food producers which are specializing in gluten-free foods. So Spring was born out of that particular need and that gap in the market. Our product has been completely designed and formulated in the UK by my co-founder, Tommy Dane. And uh, our mix is proprietary. Well, our model is, is a very unique model in which the blend is produced by us. Uh, through our partners in the UK. We import the blend here and we produce it locally. So as opposed to the current lot of products that are available, the consumer gets a very high quality, international quality, uh, gluten-free bread, a gluten-free muffin, gluten-free uh, cake at their closest popular stores. So we are available at Food Hall, we are available at Nature's Basket, and we are slowly growing. There is a growing need for gluten-free and free from products in the country, uh, which is not being met by the current crop of gluten-free producers entirely. The second is that we have a clear dearth of international quality gluten-free foods and free from foods in India. So to take care of this gap, to meet this gap in the market, uh, we got together, my co-founder Thomas Dane, who is a pioneering baker in gluten-free from based in the UK, and I got together to form Spring Gluten-Free to take care of this gap in the market. Our model is really very simple, and it's also unique in that way. So the formulations are our IP. The trade relationships are owned by us. And the production is localized with high quality producers. And we get the finest quality gluten-free foods into the market, uh, fresh, baked every day. Gluten-free globally, uh, has become quite a phenomena over the last 15 to 20 years. And as opposed to the rest of the food market, gluten-free has been growing at about five times as a category. Today in the United States, uh, the UK, Italy, Germany, and Australia, it's now in excess of an $8 billion annual revenue market. It's growing at anywhere from seven to 10% per annum as opposed to the rest of the food market, which grows at much lower levels. Uh, the second thing is that whether it's a trend or a fad, or it's something which is going to stay, you see, uh, the gluten-free consumer is, is neatly uh, segregated into two blocks. The first is the need-based consumer. The need-based consumer is typically 1% of any population group, which is the celiac. Now, celiacs uh, are, uh, face an adverse reaction to gluten every time they consume it. The second group is the want consumers. So, there is this growing trend or this growing knowledge of reducing gluten from your diet purely because we have, we are now consuming much more gluten than we ever did. Uh, the wheat content of, uh, the, the gluten content of wheat, beg your pardon, is, is much higher than what it was before. We consume gluten in many more forms as it, as it finds its way into multiple processed foods because our consumption of processed foods is much higher than it, than it ever was. As a consequence, we are consuming much more gluten than we ever did. So there is this growing need amongst consumers who are not celiacs, but who are finding that they are becoming increasingly sensitive to gluten. And in a, 
in a, a in their need to cut gluten from their diet uh, a lot of people are switching to gluten free products either in part or in whole so uh, so that is what is leading to this this ballooning growth in the market and it's not a trend that's going to stop because uh, uh, we haven't seen it flag in the last 15 years so we don't see it flagging uh, going forward as well so the segment in india is um, is very nascent right now uh, there aren't very many producers and uh, uh, and and uh, gluten free is is a largely unrepresented unrepresented category across retail so if we if we go and visit store aisles today we are pretty much where the west was about 10 years ago however uh, what is what we found is that more and more smaller producers and not to say that we are very large we are also a small startup are getting into this category purely because this is a very sticky category consumers like to stay with the brands that they trust and uh, and they want high quality products now as far as the bakery industry is concerned now typically to a couple of reasons so globally the largest category for gluten free is baked goods primarily because it's a daily needs product and uh, the bakery industry across the country has practically negligible uh, uh, representation of gluten free production so we felt that this is a great opportunity to create a line of baked gluten free foods uh, and uh, launch them in the market because it would cater to the daily need requirements of our consumers and uh, our entire line is pretty much focused on uh, on daily needs and we also have a strong line of treats what we call them which are cakes cookies and uh, biscuits and uh, and muffins but our wider line is comprises of breads burgers pizzas which basically cater to meal time requirements you know and that's our focus area the the bakery industry also is is uh, is pretty neatly divided into two parts uh, half of it is organized and the rest is unorganized sector so the organized sector comprises some of the largest names that we know and uh, and they uh, they control no wrong word um they represent the largest part of the business as of now whereas a lot of small producers are doing interesting work there is a third interesting emerging category of specialist producers now these specialist producers are people who are focusing on products like sourdough people who are uh, focused on products which are gourmet bread products and uh, but nobody is as yet looking at gluten free as a category very seriously and we are here to fill that gap so uh, so we've launched spring in uh, mumbai and uh, we've recently launched in pune as well we've tied up with some of the leading retailers uh, both online and offline for example we're there at food hall we're there at nature's basket we're there at uh, on bigbasket.com we're there at big bazaar at hypercity uh, we're there at uh, on scootsy.com so uh, pretty much uh, uh, if a consumer wants to buy uh, a gluten free product uh, we are offering them a global quality bread at a touch point which is very close to them so we are available in more than 40 locations across the city now our growth plans are two ways one is to expand our line so we are we are uh, sitting on launching a few more uh, bread products we are about to launch our cookies and uh, on the on the other hand we are also looking to launch in some of the key markets uh, in the country so we would be looking at the delhi and ncr the delhi gurgaon noida region we'd be looking at the bangalore region we'd be looking at the hyderabad region and calcutta and chennai to follow after that so our goal is to first 
build on our line, get all our production uh, uh, and our full range sorted. You can see our uh, current range is also pretty significant. And then expand into uh, two external markets uh, like the ones I've just articulated.